All right, hello friends. In this video, I am excited to talk about uh, five months in my Hobonichi Techno Weeks and how I'm going to be finishing up the year for December and just my overall experiences with this planner. As you know, if you're a podcast listener, it has been going so well. I've been loving it so much. Um, something I never thought I'd be doing with my planner. And I'm excited to share just a little bit about what I am going to transition to for the new year and why. And I think by the time we get there, it'll all make sense. But this is it. And let's just dive in. So in my last video, I didn't give you really a full tour of what all is in here. And since then, I have really focused on making the most of every single section in this little compact planner. So if we open it up, we can see I do have the spring version. They have a January start and an April start. This is the April start. In the end, I will have used this for six months, which feels really good to say I used one planner for half a year without getting distracted by anything else. Um, they have lots of overview calendars here, which I referenced so many times. This is one section. This is a day by day for a full year that I have not used, but I just saw last night somebody using this as a mood tracker, and I'm thinking about doing that for next year. So this is the one section I really haven't used. All right, so I, I didn't have this in March, April, or I got it at the end of May, so I started using it for a little bit of meal planning in the months there. And then my first Coco Daisy sticker kit arrived. These kits are so amazing because they are designed to fit this planner exactly. So every little bit fits in the boxes and takes, you know, a, a nice streamlined yet mostly Japanese layout and just makes it so beautiful and colorful. And then I love how the theme changes every month. I've never been a themey scrapbooker or I don't know, I've never really been a very cutesy scrapbooker either. Uh, and I think that made me shy away from more fun and sweet products for my planning because I felt like they might be more of a distraction and get a, get in the way of being functional with my planner. But this has been so functional for me, yet also so satisfying. My favorite time every single month is setting up for the month ahead with all of my stickers. It's just been, it's been so great. So in June, I did, I started with a little bit of meal planning, realized I never stick with the meal plan, so that wasn't going to work. And then I transitioned more into just kind of more memory planning. So, you know, what we did, some of my thoughts on it. And I continued that um, through July. I think this was one of my favorite layouts. August. Um, I did it probably in batches here and there uh, a few times over the month. I certainly wasn't doing it every day, just kind of filling things in what I, what I knew was happening. And I really enjoy having some of those things like August 28th is when we got a new boat. Steve was, uh, had been waiting for years to, to finally get his boat. I finished all seven seasons of Parks and Rec that on the 29th. So just having those little dates in there is really fun. In September, which is so funny considering this was the most beautiful kit of the six that I've received. Um, I didn't do a lot of memory planning type journaling in here. I ended up using the Heidi Swap storyline uh, book to do journaling that month. And I think that explains why there's so many blank spots here. Um, for October, I have a few notes of dates and how things were going. November, I actually filled in quite a bit more with some thoughts and feelings. I really tried to make sure I've kind of filled in the this month with a reflection was the biggest takeaway that I want to have. And it was in this past week, which I was really thinking about, I would like to have a monthly view focused on some of my content planning for all the different hats that I wear. And I wear three plus hats in addition to my personal life. And so 
for December, and I, you can see a little bit right here, I have penciled in some of the major content releases that I have. Because I have found, particularly in this quarantine life, time is a little bit more challenging and feels a little irrelevant at times. I don't always know what day it is or what time it is. Uh, our sleep schedule is off, and I have found that I'm not feeling as timely with the things that I do. They all get done eventually, but I want things to be done ahead of time. It's really, it's an important value of mine. I wanna be reliable, trusted. And so I'm using this spread to really prioritize working ahead on those major content projects. Um, I can see myself because you can see there's a lot of space here. I'm gonna end up filling in with some notes here as well. Uh, particularly if there's dates, milestones, things we do something fun. I want to add those in because this isn't taking up too much space. Um, for a moment, I was thinking about even getting like a big desk blotter, but I don't think it actually makes sense in the end. Um, I don't need a big desk blotter that's like 22 inches to write the word podcast on a day. I just need to have a view that helps me know what is the most important thing I need to be working on. And that I'm actually working ahead. Like I wanna see this all crossed off within the first two weeks of December. I wanna be really ahead of the game here. And so I put an attention here on the left side. I think in some months I haven't really put month much there, if anything. And then at the end, I'll kind of put a reflection. So more intention at the beginning and reflection at the end is my goal for those calendars. And then we have January, February, March, which I haven't used and won't be using because I will share in a little bit what my plan is. Oh, April as well. And then we go in to the week on two pages area. If you listen to any of my podcast episodes about the planners that I enjoy, I want to have a small space to note appointments and very time sensitive things like do this at this time. And, but I don't need a huge space for that. And I want a lot of space within a week to have categorized lists. It is very rare that I am thinking about a task for a specific day. I just need to know what is next. And I like to have a range of options to work from. So let's hop in. So at the very beginning, I didn't have my sticker kit, but I knew right away I wanted to have categories and I wanted to have lists. And immediately as I felt this huge like weight lifted that I could go back to this. Um, I have tried to maybe fit myself into the box of so many other planners over the years. And yet what I end up doing, even if there's, you know, columns or rows or whatever, I end up making categorized lists by the different areas and domains of my life. Sometimes those domains shift. Sometimes there's one big personal one. Sometimes I break those out but my job's at the top, and then these kind of shift over time depending on what's going on. So I really loved adding the sticker. Sometimes I use the check marks, sometimes I don't. Uh, sometimes I'll add in extra stickers, a uh, little extra, you know, I did a, had a little week, long weekend girls night plans for Emily and I, sushi, um, kind of at home camping and crafting. We ended up, yeah, what did we do? Oh, we ended up putting like a whole bunch of stuff in the living room and made like a little mini fort tent thing in the living room. It was fun. Another one here, like let's just do some fun things, reminders, and then of course lots and lots of lists of what I need to get done. I do use the method where if I'm thinking about what is next, I highlight it and then when it's done, I cross it off. Um, I've used various methods to forward tasks. Sometimes I'll just do a little arrow at the end. I would say typically I will do like this where I cross it off and put an arrow because I like to, to feel like I've reviewed everything from the previous week and forwarded what was needed. Um, again, just the shift in themes. It's been so fun. I love it. It, it makes me happy. I love setting it up every week, uh, every month, and then kind of rebooting that every single week by making intentions for the week ahead and figuring out what's on my calendar. Um, I've done various pen tests over the years. I am currently using, you can see this here is a little bit darker than what I started with. This uh, Pigma Micron PN. 
is a really, it's a Sakura pen. It's a really, really lovely, a little bit thicker than I'm used to, but it dries pretty quickly and I really, really enjoy it. All right, extra list with stickers. And then here's when I started making a list of four things that I get to do every week. And so you'll see this on most weeks. At the beginning, I had it at the bottom, four things that I get to do. And then I started moving it to the top and really making sure that every week I'm starting with this list of four things that I get to do this week. I get to watch Parks and Rec. I get to have a Blue Apron kit. Um, I get to get some rest. I get to think of paint colors. Um, I get to start a new routine. So just trying to think of things with that sense of, of optimism and positivity and knowing that I've set myself up I have chosen all of these things for my life, even if sometimes things are not obligations and, and they're not always easy, but I've chosen what, what's included in my life. And so I try to make sure to include that section every single week. Um, I've done various things with tracking over time. Here I had reading and journaling. Um, I've used this tracker at the top for treadmill time. I've used it for uh, food tracking as well. And then they even have some little stickers now too to have extra trackers in your planner. I'm always continuously amazed at how thoughtful um, the Coco Daisy team is at making sure these stickers are so usable and of course beautiful every single month. These tabs are super fun as well, the month tabs. So this has just gone really well. Um, I've loved experimenting with different types of productivity things. I had some extra, you know, home tasks here that I wanted to keep track of. And you know, it is once in a while, I do want to make a list of what to do today, but it's very rare. Typically I'm thinking about here's my list for the week and then whatever doesn't get done gets forwarded to the next week or sometimes I choose to let go of things forever. All right. Uh, you'll notice that these are laying pretty flat. I would say that has been another kind of game changer. This is the Tomo River paper. It is thin yet doesn't bleed. Um, it's just a beautiful paper. It bends really well. And between the flatness that I can just keep this open without much help. And of course it took a little, you know, wearing in to do that. But then also that I don't have any rings or discs in the middle to get in the way of my hand means I can really utilize the full area of the planner. Once in a while, I'll throw in a sticky note for something else. Lots of lists, lots of lists. All right, we're getting close to, this is this past week. So today is currently Saturday, November 28th. And I have a lot of things I need to kind of catch up on to kick off the new week. A lot of this is going to end up getting forwarded. I think I like, uh, maybe my eyes were bigger than my stomach when it came to my tasks for Thanksgiving week. But fortunately, I still have a lot of space for this coming week and not a ton of things on my calendar. So tomorrow I will set my four things I get to do for the week. You can see I have a couple little trackers going of things I want to work on as we approach the new year. I'm already thinking about building new habits and kind of getting back in the groove um, instead of, you know, staying up way too late at night just because I can. And then you can see these are what the blank spreads look like when I set them up for the whole month ahead. So they're so pretty. This one I think is one of my favorites. This one as well. It just makes me so happy to see this blank canvas, yet it's very inviting and fun. Um, this is just, this planner has just been a joy to use and I love flipping back through it. I love how colorful it is. It just feels good in my hand. All right, now here's January. And so we're gonna skip to the back. I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna do with the notes section in the back. And I just took a couple notes at meetings I went to, things I wanted to save. And then I was really thinking about, okay, I want to do more journaling. Journaling for self-care, for anxiety reduction. Um, I've experimented in journaling in other places, but I was really attracted to this idea 
of journaling inside my planner. And so I've got everything I need all in this one little book. And this just makes me so happy to see this filled up. This is all I've done. It's, you know, three or four days of journaling here, but there's so much potential. It works so well. I love adding the extra stickers in and just making a happy, special place. That's not something else. I get, all I need is my planner, a highlighter and a pen, or sometimes multiple highlighters. Um, and it's just making me so happy. So there's about 70 journaling pages in here and I wish I had been aware of them earlier or I think I would have worked more in here. Um, so let's talk about my plan for next year a little bit. As you can see, things are going really well overall and I'm just I'm loving it. But I can see that 70 journaling pages might not be enough for a full calendar year. Let's just say I do like a third to a half a page. Mm, it's really, it would be really uh, not so good if I was actually consistent at journaling, which is obviously the goal. So for next year, I have picked up a Hobonichi Techno Weeks Mega. And the Mega has more of these journaling pages in the back. It has three times as many, so 210 pages. But overall, the planner is only a little bit thicker. I don't know how they do that, but they do. I have the sneaker edition, which has more kind of like a rubberized cover like this. I wasn't very attracted to the hardcover ones. I was concerned they wouldn't lay as flat or take more, more, um, take as much rough housing as I give this one. So I like that idea and I'm just going to keep on keeping on. Like this has been so good for me. It's such an amazing planner. I love the format. I love what I can do with the months, both in terms of like baby memory keeping, you know, just a little bit of memory planning as well as my content planning. So I can really focus on getting ahead, staying on track week to week, doing my little tracking, um, setting intentions of what I get to do. And then of course, supplementing that with journaling in the back and all of that supported by my Coco Daisy stickers. So, this, I hope this is helpful for you. It's been so great for me. And I will include links to the products that I'm using and what I'm using next year in the description box below. Um, if you have any questions, I am happy to answer them. But I wish you well on your journey towards planner peace because I think I found mine. All right, take care. Have a great week.